Hi everyone, welcome back to my next PixInsight tutorial. This is my Thanksgiving weekend bonus, as I've had a few days off, and so that means more time to create more YouTube content just for you. Stay tuned as I show you how to not blow up, oops, I meant not blow out, Orion. Don't forget to subscribe and select the alert bell below so you know when I upload new astrophotography material. Like and share with your astro friends. Leave me comments below, I love reading them. And now that the boilerplate stuff is done, let's fix Orion. All right guys, today let's talk about how do we handle areas of the sky that are extremely bright and extremely dim at the same time. We're gonna use something that is called HDR composition, which is where it will take the best of the bright and the best of the light and it will blend them together so you don't have any blown out portions of your images. Now a real hard target right now is Orion's Nebula and it's up in the sky right now and we all know that the trapezium is extremely bright so it doesn't take much of an exposure to completely blow it out but there's a lot of fine nebulosity around Orion that we all want to see. So I'm going to show you briefly how to handle it. Now I went back and I had some images that I took and these are just narrow band. And when I went back and looked at my images, I realized that clouds took over all of my hydrogen alpha photos. So we are going to limp along with just oxygen and sulfur. And basically I just want to show you what happens when we blend three different exposures together versus just going with one 60 minute, 60 second long image. Oh my goodness, you hear all that? It is raining outside, which is why we are inside tonight creating a video for you. I wasn't expecting it to take over everything here. Wow, it's coming down pretty darn good. Okay, so I have, uh, okay, so what I've got here is some oxygen data here. I took images at one minute, I took them at 30 seconds, and I took them again at 60 seconds. Now, if we look at the 10 second image here, we can see that the trapezium is bright, but not completely blown out. And I almost think that I could get away with a five second image here for exposing on the trapezium. And then I've got a 30 second image here where you can see I've got a little bit more nebulosity here. It's actually looking quite nice. And let's blow it up just a little bit. And this area is getting just a little bit brighter. And then when we come over to the one minute long exposure, it's definitely got some bright going on. Now imagine if I took this at my standard four minute long exposure. This would be crazy bright and because it is blown out, we, it would be unrecoverable data. But also over here you can see that the star here, goodness, that's a lot of rain coming down. Let's see, let's zoom in on that star. He's over here, he's up here, oops. There we go. Now this is where the star is getting blown out. And you can see some subtleties here, some dots that kind of look like a square. Well, I'm shooting with the ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome camera. And this is actually a, um, a reflection bounce back from the star. So the star is coming through to my sensor and it is bouncing around in there because it is so bright. And this is a sensor reflection here. And the longer the exposure, the more defined it gets. And I will get increased halos, and I will end up with a complete square made out of dots around this star. And you would have to take this into Photoshop and do some cloning and liquefying. And it's really quite a pain in the backside to clean up. So sticking with the shorter exposures is actually pretty good. But look at the detail. Even at one minute on an oxygen filter, it looks really fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna shrink these down just a little bit here for you. And let's come over here and look at our sulfur. And this guy is one minute, 
Now, clearly he could stand to be probably even longer. Look at this. I have stars visible in the trapezium here. Look at all that. Isn't that fantastic? And that's out one minute. Now, if we come down here to 30 seconds, they really just pop out more. And then ten, a 10 second exposure. You can see I've got some evidence of the clouds going through on this night. We've got a lot of detail here. But how are we going to blend all three of these images here on sulfur and three images on oxygen together so we have what we call an HDR image? You need to know HDR is high dynamic range. And when we look at something with our naked eye, our eye is absolutely incredible because we can see so much information at the same time. We can see into the darks, we can see super brights, and our eyes just know naturally to blend everything together and they look beautiful. But a camera sensor, it can either expose for the really bright or for the really dark, and you need a way to do exposure stacking to get the best of both worlds. So let's come back here and let's go to process and we're going to go to image, image integration and let's go to HDR composition and I'm going to show you just how easy this really is. All right, so we're in our HDR composition and we want to add our files and it's very important that we have at least three files with three different exposures. So we've got 10 seconds, 30 seconds and 60 seconds. And let's go ahead and add our files here. Let's start with oxygen. So I'll go to where I had my oxygen hiding. Oxygen stacks I have. And these images, let me tell you real quick, they have been completely processed all the way through the automatic background extraction. So they have been fully calibrated. They've been cosmetically corrected. I have approved them. I've um, registered, stacked them, normalized them and then I've taken them through automatic background extraction. And that's where these files are sitting at right now. It's very important to do this to all of them first. So let's go ahead and let's open up our 10 second oxygen. Go ahead and grab 30 second oxygen and 60 second oxygen and let's open. Now these default settings, they work wonderfully. I have been playing around today with all different mix and matches of these and they're not too great. I'll be honest, if you just stick with the default, you will be very happy. And let's go ahead and let's just run it. Okay, so while we're running it, we're going to repeat the same thing over here for the Sulfur 2 images. And before all of this, I just wanted to let you know that I did stack these as only my 60 second images and then I did an HDR version and I'm going to show you what happens for each copy. Alright, so what we've got here is it created an HDR mask which is not overly impressive. It seems like it's only protecting a couple stars but I have to think there's something more to it than this but I don't need the mask so let's go ahead and close it and here's our other mask and let's close it and here's my HDR image. Let's give it a nice stretch. And there is my image for oxygen. Let's go ahead and give it an identifier so I can remember what this is later. And I'm going to put a 2 because this is the second time I've done this tonight. I don't want to get everything confused. Alright, let's clear our settings here and let's add some more files. Let's go get our sulfur go back to my light directory and I've got them over here sulfur 10 30 and 60 and we're just gonna run it and seeing as I don't have any hydrogen alpha for this particular image I did go ahead and combine just the oxygen and sulfur out of curiosity to see what it looked like it is quite interesting and I could probably play with it some more if I want to but I'm probably going to wait until I get some hydrogen alpha before I actually publish this completed image and if we didn't want to see these masks we could have unchecked this output composition masks let's go ahead and minimize this I'm gonna close the masks 
And this here will be my sulfur image. Let's give it a stretch. And there it is. Now he looks pretty good. That's the HDR of the sulfur. And let's look at just what a 60 second sulfur looks like. We're not going to notice a whole lot of difference with this one because it was never really blown out to begin with, but it's still really cool. Look at this vein through here that I had never noticed before on this particular image. So let's go here and let's look at the oxygen. The oxygen is where we're going to really notice some things. Alright, I'm going to zoom in. This is our HDR version. It's still kind of blown out, but it's not horrible. And this is our automatic background version of uh, just straight up 60 seconds. Let's uh, load up one more time. And it's subtle, but there is a slight difference. And on this video, you're probably not going to notice it. But if I had a four minute exposure like I typically take, let's say I did a four minute, a two minute, and then a 10 second, or a four, one, and 10, you would really notice a huge difference between the two. But let me bring you over here to this workspace, and I'm going to show you what I've done. Now, I combined those filters as sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, just straight up in pixel math. I just wanted to see what it would do. And these are the HDR versions of those filters. And look at my trapezium right through here. Now, if we look hard, we do see some of those stars, and we've got some nice detail through here. Now, this one is also combined as sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, but this is, are the images that were not run through HDR. And we have some very clear uh, brightness. Some, um, we have very clearly blown out this whole trapezium area. So let's make this guy bigger. This is straight up just the raw images. And this one here whoops, is going to be our HDR version and there they are side by side like I said if I took longer exposures which would get us a whole lot more out through here but it would also blow up this star really bad it would be a lot more noticeable but it was just really so easy to do using the process image integration HDR composition we load up our three different exposures use the default values and press go just that easy so really, that's what I have all for you for this video, is I just wanted to show you something quick and simple this week on how to handle the different exposures within the Orion Nebula. And I hope you learned something. I appreciate you spending your time with me. If you like this video, please take a moment to like it. Leave me a comment. I love reading them. I read all of them, and I try to respond. And don't forget to subscribe. I love every one of you. Thank you for checking in. Until next time, I am wishing you all the very clearest of skies.